The roads. Roads. When someone advocates a stateless society, a question that pops into people's mind almost immediately is, but who will build the roads? Now, this is an incredibly simple problem. Private roads exist today, and they work fine. Private highways work with tolls, and no, this doesn't mean stopping, putting coins in a slot, and then driving on uh, like the turnpikes. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. Perhaps a sticker that you put on your car, and a card that scans as soon as you enter onto the roads. An example of this would be uh, the Fast Track service in Southern California. In Southern Cal in the Fast Track service, what happens is you get on the road, and there's this big old arch thing that goes over the road, and it has these little zapper things that zap that you know shoot a little whatever it is they shoot at the little fast passes that as you go under the thing and it deducts whatever needs to be deducted for driving on the road and you know it's different prices at different hours and stuff like that and it's really uh, convenient right and you don't and you don't have to slow down it just zaps the little thing on your fast uh, fast track uh, thing the advantage of private highways is that they are built based on where the builders think traffic will be, not based on who is able to secure enough state funds for its district. In fact, that's one reason why, well, that's the main reason why private roads exist today, to fill in the gaps that central planning inevitably leaves behind. And roads do tend to be built based on where population is, um, but that's only because population roughly corresponds with political power. For example, in Alaska, you have these bridges to nowhere. In West Virginia, you have uh, opulent you know, thoroughfares that are, that are totally underused and going over all these mountains and stuff. Um, and you have this infrastructure in these, uh, in these low population states because these low population states have a lot of electoral votes relative to their population size and so they have a whole lot of roads per capita because that's where the political power is right and so and central planning planners build roads based on where the political power is uh, not based on where market demand is and that private wor roads work despite state roads being free to use that is you don't stop having to pay tax for public roads just because you paid for a private road is testament uh, to the degree that the state uh, mismanages resources Also, by being pay-to-use, private highways tend to be less overused. And this is becoming less and less of an advantage as state roads are becoming pay-to-use. Uh, municipalities actually make people pay to use what they call public roads, even though those roads are were built with tax dollars. What this basically amounts to is the state seizing uh, money for a road from you and then making you pay to use it. You can expect to see more of this stuff as states continue to fail. Another advantage of private highways is that if it's a boondoggle, then those who chose to invest in it uh, take the loss, not the taxpayers. If it's a status boondoggle, um, it's just added onto the onto the debt, and what that results in is inflation, which hurts the poor the most, as the poor spend a greater percentage of their income on consumer goods and have less non-monetary assets. Right, because poor people are uh, using cash a lot more. Um, a depreciation in the value of cash is going to hurt poor people disproportionately because rich people tend to have uh, like land property, and so if uh, and so if the value of the dollar goes down, well, the, all that means for people who own a lot of land is that the value of their land goes up in terms of nominal dollars. Right, dollars are worth less. That means everything gets more expensive, including the land that they own. Right? But poor people don't have a lot of you know non-monetary property they just have a they just have some cash they earn and if the cash becomes less valuable then they're gonna get hit you know almost with a hundred hundred percent of that and so what about the poor well first off tolls for these roads really aren't that expensive um, as of writing this in July 15th 2009 and I don't think there have been a, a significant hike since then uh, and hyperinflation hasn't kicked in yet the, here are some rates for uh, toll roads in Southern California where the links are for wherever this is. If it's on YouTube, it'll probably be in the description. If it's on some other site, it'll be wherever that is. Um, but on all of these posts, I'm going to have a link to where all of the um, sources are for all these things. So if you want to see what the prices for the toll roads are, you can click that link to see where the prices for the toll roads are if you so care. It's really not that, not that expensive. Okay, if you care, you can click on the link. Okay. What's more is that in a stateless society, if an employer wants workers, 
he's going to have to factor in the cost of the roads. And since he's no longer paying any taxes, he has the money to pay for those roads. So it's it's really not that hard. I mean, he's, he's paying for them anyway. He's just going to be paying for them directly instead of through taxes in a stateless society. I mean, you, we're, we're paying for roads right now, so um, it's not like you know, it's not like now we have to start paying them now that the state is gone. As for private roads on a smaller scale, that's not something that can be addressed as explicitly. First off, private roads around businesses work just fine. Uh, agents of the state posing as regulators, they take their cut, right? making sure the roads are uh, up to code or whatever, as if, as if a mall wants to have an unsafe parking lot, right? Um, I mean, a mall has an incentive to make a safe parking lot because if they have an unsafe parking lot, the customers aren't going to park in that parking lot. They're going to have to park off in the sticks. Um, and as a result, less people are going to go to the mall at all. Right? And so uh, a mall has a vested interest in making sure their parking lots are safe. Um, and yes, I know that towing laws are state-enforced laws, but in a free market, you would still have private towing companies and towing cars. It just wouldn't have state-sanctioned. And the towing companies would be much better armed, or at least I would be in that circumstance. And uh, there would be a lot for businesses to work out for in regards to roads. But remember, each person is making uh, the adjustments that he needs to make. It's not like a single central planner needs to understand how all these things would work out. And each uh, individual business person taking care of the roads, relevant roads around them, um, he doesn't have to, he's not managing the entire national road grid, right? And he doesn't have to make sure that the traffic, um, from if he he doesn't have to deal with the traffic nationwide right. he basically he's going to expect that traffic is going to be about what it has been what it had been in the state of society um maybe it'll just a little bit but it's going to be about what it was in the state of society and, and they're going to have to maintain uh the roads like they were maintained in the in the state of society Roads for neighborhoods, in my estimation, will more closely mimic the housing quality. That is, uh, crappy neighborhoods will have even crappier roads, and rich neighborhoods will have even nicer roads. And one may say this is an, unjust, this is an injustice. I see it more like poor people have better things to spend their money on. And, you know, remember the third world structure of production. And, like, it, and think of it this way. There's an amount of welfare that's going to exist on a free market and this welfare is going to go to poor people do the are the poor people going to spend the money on having roads as nice as the rich neighborhood or are they going to spend that money on dental and medical services right i would expect the latter and i would i i i would expect that they would take a hit on having a little uh not so nice roads and, and and poor people have not so nice roads today anyway so it's not going to be that much of a difference most neighborhood roads are free to use today and so it's possible that a neighborhood road could become as a result of being situated between two major arteries become basically like a through street and become extremely popular uh, and there are many ways to deal with deal with this deal with making sure that the road right outside your house doesn't become a highway um, the neighborhood could decide to erect a toll booth with retractable spikes or just erect retractable spikes or make it so that only people who live in that road can come in or, or live in a house on that road can come in. Um, or perhaps at one end of the road, it could just be walled off, right, making the street a dead end. And remember, uh, these people don't need licenses, and so there's no state to sue them, so they can do you know stuff like this, and they, they can protect uh their eminent domain. Eminent domain in free market sense, not eminent domain in terms of legislation, in terms of the state just deciding something gives their eminent domain. Um, anyway, now my prediction would be that the roads would be used a lot less, right? State roads function as a subsidy for the automobile industry, which is a which is well politically connected. And so the initial building of all these roads um, was not so much a, a reflection of genuine demand, but of corporatism. And they were done under the guise of moving um, the military from one end of the country to another in the case of an invasion, right? Like the Soviet Union was going to invade the east or west coast and they'd have to move them. And, and ridiculous, ridiculous notion, but that's uh, why they were built. So these roads, were the highways were not initially built as a response to genuine market demand, um, but they were artificially created by the state. And 
because of this, and because roads in general are built by the state, they serve as a, a subsidy to the automobile industry. And because of this, I predict with the fall of the state, um, there will be more rail being built and more rail being used. And this will be proper. It will be a reflection of genuine desire, not some forced project and or a plaything of the political class. Now, there are so many headaches with roads that people assume that only an agency as large as the state can overcome this problem, when it is the state management of roads that causes these headaches in the first place. Because as a monopoly, they don't have any incentive to do uh, that good of a job. And being free to use, these roads are over overused. Right? The first roads were private. Roads are no problem in a stateless society and uh, really can be built a lot better. In a stateless society, you can look forward to less and less crowded roads.